Well, I think the future is, uh, is bright. I, I think they all, it, it, the, the corporations, especially the regional corporations and some of the village corporations are coming around, I think they now understand clearly how to do business uh, in uh, a non-native, non-traditional way. Um, uh, they can compete with the best in the world. Uh, they have some of the best subsidiaries in the world, whether it's engineering, whether it's, you know, you can go through a whole litany of uh, different subsidiaries that they now operate. Um, and a lot of that's due to 8A. But again, it's with 8A, once you get so big, you sort of shift out of that program and you have to compete with the rest of the world. And I think that I'd put up any of these native corporations against any corporation in the world today on just about any line of business. And I think they could compete with them heads up. Um, they have that kind of talent, and I think that talent is getting better uh, because the, the corporations have invested so much money into education through foundations, uh, scholarships, and the things that they've done. Those younger generations are now coming back and are now becoming part of what's going on. Uh, there's a lot more to do in that area. Uh, it, I, it never ends. Education is something that should never end, and, and I think the corporations recognize that. So yeah, I, I feel good about the future of the corporations. I, I think I feel bad about how we protect the other side of it, though. I mean, it's, it's not just all about the corporations. And I think the older you get, the more you realize that there is a culture out there that we got from our parents and our grandparents that need to, it needs to be protected, too. I think there's more and more nonprofits that are doing that, are getting more and more focused on that, but they also need the funding. And I think the corporations need to spend more time and some more money on providing, or providing money to these kind of services. Uh, it's not just about getting dividends to the shareholders. It's about education. It's about culture. It's about health. And the corporations could be a lot more helpful in those areas with the nonprofits than they are today. Um, I mean, they're very helpful, but I think they can financially help more uh, than they are. Uh, so I, I, I worry about rural Alaska more than anything, that uh, they're still going to get the short end of the stick because they just don't have the numbers to uh, fight in the legislature or in Washington, D.C. That, that the non-natives have. I think the corporations are helping more there, but they could be a lot more helpful in those areas uh, on the non-corporation side uh, than they are. And I, I think, you know, they're coming around to it, but I still worry about it. Um, it's all about, you know, Anchorage and, and uh, Fairbanks and that really don't bring a lot to the state except population and a transportation hub. All the money that's being made in the state comes from rural Alaska yet they get very little of it going back to rural Alaska. It's all generated out of rural Alaska, whether it's prudal, whether it's fishing, timber, mining. All of that's generated somewhere else, but the credit goes to Anchorage and, and Juneau when it comes to dollars coming back, because that's where the population is. Is that fair? Probably not. And that's why I think 7i was such a great piece. Somebody, whoever thought it up, and I think it was me and a few others that, uh, in, in Congress at the time, revenue sharing, uh, you know, was looked at with very jaundiced eyes by everybody. Why should I share what I'm producing? But once we learned how to account for it, and once we settled the 7i litigation, it's worked well, and it's saved corporations from bankruptcy. It's spread the wealth. It's what it was all about. Uh, where you're, you know, developing a resource, it should get spread to everybody. Uh, it only helps. And I think that's where the state misses it. That resource doesn't get spread to everybody. It gets to Anchorage or Fairbanks, you know, 90% of it, and very little gets out into the areas that you're actually producing out of. So I worry about Bush, Alaska from that standpoint. Sort of worry about the younger generations I guess I'm not as worried about the younger generations as I was. Seems like the newer, younger generations are more apt to 
understand or try to understand their culture, where they came from, than what I call the lost generations or generations of my age that, uh, you know, sort of had this BIA, um, BIA uh, attitude that, you know, the government can take care of me, and we sort of lost a big period of it, and I think angst was a big part of that, that people's expectations was, well, hell, I'm going to get rich, I won't have to work. And uh, I think you saw that in a lot of the young men, or at least my age at the time, dropped out of school. We still have a high, fairly high dropout rate, not as bad as it was of young men, but young women are coming up the ladder and doing very well. So, you know, there's pros and cons to all of it. Overall, it's, uh, it, was ex it started out as an experiment by Congress, and I think it turned out to be one of the greatest things that happened to Alaska Natives. We didn't get thrown on reservations. Uh, we got at least to try uh, to make self-determination work, and I think to a great degree it has uh, for the majority of Alaska Natives. Uh, there's still a lot to do. I mean, we still have a lot of poverty. Uh, we have a lot of uneducated kids. Uh, we have problems in schools, suicide rates, those kind of things. All still need to be, try to be fixed to the extent you can. Uh, but it gives us the ability to now go look at those things where 40 years ago, we had hardly the ability to look at anything. I mean. We didn't know how Washington, D.C. worked. We didn't have any money to do anything in Washington, D.C. Everybody was scraping the bottom of the barrel to try to get people to D.C. so that they could get this fight. Today, we have the political power to make things happen. And uh, I see that as a, as a great, great step, at least our voices being heard.